have to fix this for to be sure. So. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay, so the, our next speaker is then Stefano, who will tell about the activities in Italy. Okay. So, good afternoon. I am Stefano Contri from INFN, Istituto Nazionale di Fisica Nucleare, which is a national institute, and my section is section of Bari, which is southern Italy. And I will talk about uh, cloud activities in my institution for bioinformatics. In particular, I will talk about the in, in my institution, uh, there is a relatively new, it's one year old data center, um, which is called RECAS, uh, in, uh, in Bari, it's called RECAS Bari Data Center, and we host an infrastructure as a service cloud platform. Uh, we already know what infrastructure as a service is, but just to repeat this, essentially providing uh, virtual machines and storage volumes and uh, networks and all the infrastructure level. No platform, no software and whatever. And it's, uh, the, the, the data center is not a, a national one, it's more kind of a regional one, so we have smaller number with respect to the one you have here. For example, we, we have around 1,100 CPU core and 5 terabytes of RAM, a quite fast network, and uh, we use a different network technology with providing um, cloud, resource, cloud resources with respect to the, one, uh, to the one used here. So we don't have private EPs, which we associate public uh, floating EP, but we have just VLAN mapped on the cloud infrastructure with pub, both public and private IPs directly mapped. And a vault firewall and uh, 180 terabytes of uh, storage in Replica 3. These are kind of hardware, let's say hardware stuff. And it's based on OpenStack. In fact, you will see that the, 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 the interface is mostly the same exactly the same <coughs> with respect to this one, the one that you have here, but we don't have the logo. We used to, but we have just dropped it in the new version. We have not replaced it still. It's more about more or less one year that we don't have the logo. So <laughs> I and it's modular so you can in principle add whatever you want and we support some high level sites. So, um, I just want to specify, I liked yesterday someone talked about um, infrastructure for research, academic research infrastructure. So, we provide our services mostly to um, research institutions and academic institutions. We have some, also some uh, private, um, let's say customer, but we don't sell anything because uh, we're, we're, we're just in a testing phase, but it's mostly an academic uh, um, research data center, in academic research infrastructure, and uh, also we don't have service level agreement, we, offer, we, we do our best effort, and, but we cannot guarantee if, that if something goes wrong on uh, um, Friday evening, you will have it replaced before Monday morning. Okay, so this is just a summary. You can have resources which are instances of virtual machines for the end, and that can be used to develop a deploy software system. It's possible to create resilient systems with high, level of high availability using multiple instances with load balances, a lot of systems that I'm not going to explain here. It's not really interesting. Um, we have seen also yesterday in the demo that uh, virtual instances are similar to tra traditional hardware servers. So they use familiar, familiar operating systems. We provide Linux, Windows, and, or you can provide whatever you, you want with your personal images. And you can interact with the machines, as we've seen yesterday. We have a catalog of image services. Um, so we have virtual images, which are templates, pretty basic, like 
pre-configured uh, basic um, operating systems like Ubuntu or CentOS, Red Hat, pretty standard, uh, with different kind of flavor. Flavors means like the tiny, the standard tiny that we have used yesterday in the demo. And we have also a certain number of templates at the um, software configuration that we can we will see today in the, in the demo. And you can also upload uh, your own or modify ours and make your version of our templates. But most of all, the important thing is that we are, in many cases, willing to help people developing their own templates, their own software configuration. So if you you can see, uh, if if you see that our template is not so suitable for your purposes, we can help you customize it for yourself, so that you can deploy it um, many time, many times in the future. So this is just a small sketch of what we support. We have just a wide range of projects, a heterogeneous range of projects. We have the EGI Federated Cloud uh, regional and national projects, which are okay. this, these are three. We have also a particular set of regional projects, with, which is in um, collaboration with uh, private companies. We support some of them. And then we support also the regional government, um, physics, which is, let's say, the core business of the data center, in, not of the cloud part, now of the whole data center, and we support high energy physics experiment, uh, particle physics, which, are, for example, CMS and ALICE are at CERN. Mm -hmm. Then we have astrophysics experiments, which are Fermi, Pamela, our satellite experiments, T2K, these neutrino physics experiments. Then we have medical physics and uh, satellite Im image analysis or geophysical uh, application processes. And then we have uh, also an important part is consists of bioinformatics. And we support BioVel, Elixir, and LifeWatch initiatives in our data center. And this is something I will deal with in this demo. So. Let's go to the question that has already been answered many, many times. Uh, why cloud for bioinformatics and training? Most, first of all, it's easier to deploy common tools, for example, just simple F SFTP servers or analysis tools. You don't have to install it by yourself, but you can use a pre-configured image and just put it to work and then destroy it when you don't need it anymore. But, okay, so then uh, there's elasticity and scalability. We will see a small example of this in, in the demo. It's easier to manage and share data in this, uh, this, this sentence, um, in a certain sense, looks at the future. I will talk briefly about the Indigo project at the end of my presentation. We will see where we are aiming at. Um, it's easier to adapt infrastructure to the needs of a classroom, which goes in pairs with elasticity and scalability in a certain sense. So you can customize easily the number of users, the tools, and so on. And you optimize uh, the usage of resources. For example, if you have to provide, uh, or if you, have, if you are realizing the like, a couple of courses per year, you don't need to have your own machines or your own servers, or you, you don't have to think about a lot of stuff, which you can just, uh, and you can just rely on what exists on the cloud infrastructure. <coughs> what do we have for, or we support for bioinformatics? So we have workflow management tools, Lonely Pipeline, Taverna and Galaxy, which is web based. We have many analysis tools. This is mostly in the in the in the batch cluster, so you can use it by, by accessing directly the batch cluster. But we have experiences with we have experience with these, so um, we can uh, help you set them up also with virtual machines and whatever. And I put dots here because um, for most uh, 
open source tools, we are happy to help you or to, to understand with you the usage of, and the setup of these tools in virtual machines. Applications, so we have biomass and MSA pad, and we have a, a record science gateway, which is, uh, give, provides simple access to grid and cloud resources and applications, and it, it's based on LifeRay. This is just what users use in our platform. Everything is governed by the job submission tool, short JST. We have the scientist here, which um, uses application clients, browsers, and workflow manager and puts data in some kind of storage, for example, on cloud based or web tab. And this pool of resources interacts with REST and SOAP web services, which are called the front end in this picture, and uh, interact with the DB server, which are called and interact with the backend. It's a lot of interaction in this picture. And uh, the backend is made of cloud resource, resources or physical resources, servers, batch cluster, or the EGI. And this exchanges data with the <coughs> store, previous storage, storage I previously mentioned, and, uh, and scientists can collect user data from there. So it's kind of a circular picture in which everything work, works in a perfect way, at least in the picture. So, so um, in the future, th there is a project which is called, uh, a European project with, which is called Indigo Data, in Indigo Data Cloud. It's uh, ongoing. <coughs> it's developing um, an open source data and computing platform which is uh, mm, targeted at scientific communities which wants to uh, provide flexible data sharing across groups and infrastructure, multiple sources and storage location, and transparent network interconnections and dynamic and complex workflow management. We will see, okay, to summarize this in just some words, wants to provide, um, wants to provide people with uh, just like one-click applications. If you want something, you, you, you have not to worry about templates or whatever, you just go to one web page, you click on the service you want, you, you can manage your data, which are scattered all around the globe. It's a pretty big um, project and it's quite promising. For example, among the supported use cases of uh, Indigo, there is a on-demand one-click scalable Galaxy installation. And it is based on Docker, Mesos, and one data to manage data and application. Just one example, I find it interesting, is one data. It's this application to, you can have your space, which is physically shared, it's physically distributed all over the world, and uh, you can have experiment data simulations in your spaces, and you can just interact with them in a smart way. Okay, this is just under construction. It is not already working. It's not as beautiful as I am describing, but we hope that it can become reality in a quite near future. And so teams, yeah. Who are scientists? Yeah. You can. Okay. You have to. Um, uh, you have to find the provider, but all over the world you can connect to this uh, service and uh, if they support you with some space or s some applications, uh, y you can use it. But it's, it's uh, currently under construction, so you cannot really use it today, but it will, it will be nice when it will work. Okay. Um, there are some people working on it. Uh, this is pretty much the whole team of people. It's okay, it's not that big, but we are a regional <coughs> center. 
This is the first part, and the, the, just the presentation starts here. And we have some, now a small demo, which I will show you basically the same thing we've seen yesterday, done in a slightly different fashion. So we go to our, you see, it's pretty much the same interface, the logo has changed, but Okay, it's OpenStack, it's something you already knew, you already know very well from yesterday experience. So we connect to that with my don't remember it. Okay, so we have our project which is which is called Elixir. IT, we have some more, but okay, we're not interested. And uh, let's imagine to have a, a real use case. So you are a bioinformatics trainer and you want to deploy a system for a course you're, you're, you're really uh, constructing. For example, you have a class, okay, don't, uh, don't look at those VMs which are not important for our use case. Um, you want to construct this course and you need um, resources. For example, the first use case is that you have to teach how to perform some analysis within our studio to a class of 15 people. Okay? So, practical use case. We will see how to do this uh, with virtual machines, with contextualization scripts and Docker which is quite good for this particular use case and now we'll see how. So, we will use a template which is... Oh, this is not... Let's say... You don't have to. Huh? Say to desktop if you want to reuse it. Okay. Will it understand that uh, he has to open it? No. You want to view the contents? Yeah. Try to open and see if there's a select program from you. Okay. okay. I don't use Windows very much, so sorry. Perfect. Yeah. Very nice. This time with Word. Yeah. Word. <laughs> Word pad, this one. Okay, it's pretty nice now. Okay, so this is a simple, very, very simple bash script, which uh, you don't even have to learn about. It, it, you, you can just take it as it is. It's just a contextualization script. We will see where to put it now. If I can just uh, describe what it does, these lines tells him to use bash. This line uh, allows me to enter as root. This is not very much liked by some people, but I like it this way. And But you can also uh, array. Uh, what, what you will need is... Okay. It's just this line and these two lines. So, we just take it as it is. Copy. Then we go to the, to the infrastructure and we launch our class. So we're set of instances which we call, with a lot of fantasy, our studio class. We select a flavor. We say to it that we want, okay, let's say, 15. 20, no, 20 is too much. 15, you have to ask the system administrator to increase your quota if you want more. Fortunately, the system administrator is really close now, but unfortunately, it's quite, it's too long for the demo. So we will, then we choose an image. Now we choose Ubuntu. I select the key pair to access it. I do something now for this demo that we must never be done, but I will do it in a, which I open all 
This means that everything can be accessed. Okay, I could also just open HTTP, which is much safer. I choose public net and I paste here my script. Okay. I erase this one and I just launch it. Okay, now it's working. And it's working. And it's working. And it's still working. And now it's working a little seriously. So, uh, these are 15 VMs, each with a public IP and each accessible with RStudio. Now, it will take some time to, to to install everything, but we will follow the progress with this. And we, we go, we proceed with the demo. Okay, so um, we will see the result in a while. So, okay, many, a couple are, are up and running now, and we will see later the, the effect. Okay, let's suppose we have, we have realized our class. We will see how it works and, and why it, it is fine for me to use Docker in this fashion. And let's now realize a completely different use case in which I have a class, but I want just a one single, a single virtual machine with uh, many users on it and uh, each with a, his own account and a quite large space uh, shared between the users. This is an actual use case. I've taken the idea from um, a request uh, by Allegra. Here we have really realized this and I, I, I've just automated it with contextualization script. So we will use Heat, which is this uh, panel here, in which you just um, plug a, a template, a pre-configured template to realize your system without <coughs> any effort. So, we go here, with stacks. Uh, a stack is a set of resources which are um, logically interconnected. For example, if I have a virtual machine and a <coughs> volume which are built to, to stay together, to be linked together, just for the purpose they have built, they are logically interconnected, and I want them to be connected also within a, let's say, container. It's not correct term, but let's say it anyway, uh, which is called a stack. So we're going to create a stack, which is a set of resources. To do this, we just uh, copy, we don't copy this, no, it's this one. Don't You don't care about all this stuff, you just go here and plug the URL and that's it okay so you have to assign a name to the stack which is I call it bio class put the password here I will not use it anyway and then the name of the, v the VM which will be part of the stack I will call it with a lot of fantasy by your class. I want it uh, large, so I leave large. I have to put the name of my key, which I don't remember, and I take it from somewhere here. You should remember this just to plug it in and being able to access it. And I leave everything else at this. I want, a, let's say, 200 gigabytes volume size. And how many users do I have in my classroom this afternoon? I have like, okay, 25 users. So I put 25 here. And I launch the stack. And it's in progress. And okay, it's working and working. And same thing as before. We, we can look at it. Mm -hmm. 
So I open it in another tab, and this is the pool of resources he's created. It's quite the same that has been shown briefly yesterday. In fact, the, I, I use the same template to create the stack on CSC cloud infrastructure, and it's made of um, so a port, which is like essentially a network interface with public IP. The inter uh, the instance, which is the VM the attachment of the volume, which is essentially a link between a VM and the volume, and the volume itself. So if we go back to stacks, it's still in progress, we can monitor what has happened to our virtual machine. Okay, you can see in the log that this, okay, this can seem strange, but it's kind of Docker telling us that he has downloaded the container and is trying to uh, deploy it, and when it will finish, we will be able to access. Okay, it's not finished still, but we can see if we're lucky that it's still in progress. Nice. Mm -hmm. This is called demo effect. Demo effect. Okay, and you see that uh, the stack is deploying itself to the VM within the, the set of resources. There, there will be also a volume in this in this tab, and uh, when it will be ready, we will be able to access it with SSH. And uh, okay, so if instead we go to one of these public IP we can see that we have our studio sign in with the same credential our studio our studio okay. here and you can use it as so you have like 15 of these for each one for each of your students you can just give to them the ip address and use it for your purposes so um, they can um, do things in here and just destroy everything when the course has ended. If you want to take things a little bit further, you can just configure the contextualization script in order to let the, uh, Docker associate a path on your VM which is connected to an external volume and you will be able to save, for example, the homework of your students on the VM. But the really important thing is that you have in a real, uh, it's in a really fa um, fast way, quick way, the possibility of deploying many uh, environments hosting our studio for students. Okay, maybe some of you can object, okay, but this is not production level, maybe the password is it, it is not so secure to um, have public IP exposed R Studio instances with uh, R Studio R Studio with simple credentials credentials and so on. But uh, in fact I will just need it for a couple of days for the, the, the time of the of, of, um, of the course. And it's perfectly fine in my opinion to have it this way. And I, I don't have to uh, spend energies in configuring for example an R Studio server with the HTTPS configuration and all uh, set up the users myself. It's just an automatic way of doing it. And so you can do this with, for example, um, standard R. Uh, I can find it. Syntax and it's the R Studio most of us know. Okay, when we don't need it anymore, we just Okay, we can also do, don't uh, uh, go out. We just select everything. And we just we don't need it anymore because the course has ended and we terminate. Done. Okay, I'm not deleting important. And so it's gone in the same way it had gone. 
okay now it's deleting so it's quite uh, so um, making a balance of what you have to learn to do this is just a few comments you don't need exactly to know if you're a trainer what goes on behind all this infrastructure you just need to, the, to how which buttons you have to, to press so launch instance and how to configure a, a few parameters and a template which you don't have to write yourself so it's quite straightforward but we hope to bring things further with Indigo in which you can just automate this um, just by clicking um, on a, a website and everything will the shop will um, will be instantiated in an uh, automatic fashion. To show this, we can show the first step, which we have. Okay, you see, virtual machine uh, going away. Uh, to do this, we see a video. Must be somewhere. Here. Okay. Let's say. Okay. We um, this is a video um, made by a colleague of mine, it's called Marika, and uh, we execute a mo molecular dynamic application in a quite automated fashion. So we see that here, demo, we do this, we're just using, uh, um, okay, this is CyberDuck, it's a tool to access files. We um, have a script which is called uh, amber underscore run dot sh, and the input data are stored on S3, Amazon S3, so on containers. And the, the, this command will submit script uh, to Kronos, which is a program which will take care of submitting it, and monitoring the status of the submitted jobs. We see that, okay, we have 11, 12, or over 20. It's 20 jobs. Now, in this moment, 20 have been submitted, three are running, and 17 are acute. And okay, we see this number changing quickly. And this tells you that many are success now, up to the end, in which, okay, we have made the video when everything was successful, but it doesn't ever go this way. <laughs> okay, so what happens now? Um, the script has been executed and has producing uh, some outputs which are uh, from the machine are automatically uploaded to your S3 bucket so to object store, Amazon object storage you see here you had just the script now you have also the outputs and you can access it with any system of And you can download them also to for for further analysis. For example, you, you take the 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 file, you download it in your computer, and you can use it to, to you can visualize your your result with some kind of visualization tool, which we'll see now. You just drop your result in here, and you have it. Okay, in the same fashion, okay, so you can visualize. In the same fashion, you can start an instance of our studio, which is actually the same we have done here, but in a slightly more automated way. We write a JSON file. You don't have to do this; it already exists. And uh, yeah, you specify in a straightforward way the, the features of your uh, appliance, and then you use your system to use Marathon to deploy the, the system, and it tells you when it's complete. And now it's complete. You take this and you access our studio exactly the same way. Okay, it's, it's using uh, 
87874, but we use it 18, but it's basically the same. Where do we want to go from here? We want to take this one step further and automate it in a, in, with Indigo, not just us, uh, in the sense that you don't have even to worry about the template or to execute it on a command line, but just obtain it from a web panel and click it and obtain it in a simple way and obtain it also distributed all over infra in infrastructures all over the world together with data and okay we are not lucky oh we are lucky okay you see this is our the, the VM with our um, classroom uh, okay I was I thought I could do this with my laptop then I switched to this computer and I, uh, now I cannot access this VM by uh, SSH because I don't have the key here but we can see in the log that okay this is a little bash but I needed 25 users and this is what the system has executed so there is user 1, user 2, user 3 up to user 25 has been created by the contextualization script and uh, they have this large uh, ext4 device attached and linked, mounted and linked to their home directory so it, it's a shared data space and I have also installed Bowtie automatically and okay if you access this VM you will have the system up and running and usable when it's done the course is uh, you, you see there's there's the volume here which is this my class in the volume and it's um, 200 gigabytes large and attached to, to my VM when it's done oh, wrong tab I just go here and I decided I don't need it anymore they delete it and it will go away the same way it's gone and I think it's enough for all. That's pretty much everything I wanted to show. Are there any questions?